be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to episode 25 of Rabbit Trails, along with my partner in crime, Matt Marciano. Matt, how are you doing, brother? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. How are you, Dennis? Good. Hey, listen, we're not going to have any connection issues this week, are we? <laughs> well, it's still uh, early in the broadcast, but yeah. uh, let's see what uh, happens. I'll have to get out my cricket clip again if that happens. But uh, <laughs> <God. laughs> that was a hoot, man. That was funny. It was great. Ed- it was fun editing it and, and seeing all the things that are, uh, you know, that you have to, that you don't realize when you're in the middle of filming something. But sure. Anyway, look, I got my coffee. I need it today in my custom-made Dennis. This is a Dennis-made mug. I made this mug. That's and, awesome. Uh, we, uh, we did an educational event in New York several years ago. And on the Saturday night, uh, we uh, had our dinner and an activity. And so the dinner was, and it was all at this little pottery shop in, in Manhattan. And we all got a piece of pottery and we got to decorate it. And, then they baked it, and three days later, they ship it to us, and it was great. You know, so it's a great memory, and it holds a lot sure. of coffee. And after going through social media this morning, I needed my coffee. <laughs> right? Give, well, give, you, give you some go-go <laughs> juice. Yeah, yeah. So, look, this week, um, you know, I've just talked about it. I think what we want to do is... Uh, talk about a couple of things, but the first m- most important thing, and it just really came across social media this morning, and um, we're going to title this episode Potions for Your Emotions. Ooh. Ooh. Because we, as an industry, are enthralled in potions. If you give me a special potion in a beautifully designed package, that's different from anything else that you see. And you tell me an amazing story that it was harvested from a special tree in the rainforest and the Amazon and all of that. I, I want to buy it. I want to buy it and I want to use it on my hair. And, yeah. then they, and, and it has all these healing qualities and I'm not meaning to make light of it. Well, I am meaning to make light of it because I think it's, crazy uh that we fall for all these stories i mean we all should have been dorothy and the wizard of oz because we all (laughs) you know we all we all we don't want to look behind the curtain we want to believe that the wizard is the all-knowing all-seeing you know the master of all and and so as a result of that that's why we have so many different special potions that are introduced that are supposed to do so many amazing things for our hair and some of the they do benefit there are benefits but sometimes they're really those benefits are really uh they're inflated so so today you know the subject of oils came up and uh you know our favorite coconut oil (laughs) <laughs> uh, I feel like a coconut. <laughs> it raises its ugly head. <laughs> again. You know, I thought that yeah. I thought that ship had sailed, but apparently <clears throat> it's no it's back no, in because, port. Well, here here's what happened, which is really funny, is that you know, I thought we had resolved the issue with coconut oil in the first place, and then they come out with fractionated coconut oil. That sounds pretty special, doesn't it? Fractionated. Yeah. And what does that um, actually uh, mean? Well, precisely? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to I'm going to share it with you in a minute because uh, I'm you know when I go and after and I have to research some of this stuff, I, I get so excited I just can't hardly wait. <laughs> and of course, my vocabulary becomes very small. <laughs> Short words, mostly consonants, <laughs> not many vowels. <laughs> but. Um, Let's let's talk about oils in the first place. You know, one, why would you use an oil in your hair? I mean, what's the point of that? I mean, people like me who have fine hair, I would go, oh, dude, why would I use an oil in my hair? Uh, So think about the hair for just a minute. 
So everyone who is watching this, unless you uh, have virgin hair uh, or unless you're six years old, okay, you have microscopic rips, tears, gaps, and holes in your hair. It's part of life. It happens to hair because, you know, uh, as the hair gets beat up with the way that we brush it, uh, we, we tear off cuticle layers and the cuticle layer of the hair mm -hmm. is the protective sheath. Um, as we chemically treat our hair, one of the side effects of a chemical process is that products like peroxide punch holes in the cuticle layer. So the more chemical exposure we get, I mean, even if you, even if you don't have chemicals in your hair, if you spend a lot of time in the sun, and this happens most, it's most obvious with people that have light hair, is that even the UVA rays will disrupt, disrupt the color chromophores in the hair and your hair will lighten, which will create some degree of porosity because it's a breaking down of the hair structure. So, so porosity is something that we have. Now, healthy hair will normally reject, reject moisture. That's what healthy hair does. So, you know, um, that test we talk about all the time, you know, take a, you know, a healthy hair strand, put it in a, a little cup of water, and it'll probably float on top of the water for a while before it sinks. Because eventually it will sink because the molecular weight of water is so small, it will eventually penetrate through the hair. But the hair will resist it initially. And of course, if you do it with porous hair, the hair will immediately sink to the bottom. So one of the things that help protect us is a nice compact cuticle. And there's something between our cuticle layers that are called lipids. Uh, uh, MEA-18 is what the cosmetic chemists call the, the um, compound that the, it's what we call the cell mm -hmm. membrane complex. Uh, it's really just natural lipids and they are really the, the glue that hold the edges of the cuticle layer closed. And as we chemically treat our hair, as we abuse our hair with heat, as we beat it up and create porosity, those, those lipids naturally wear away. The great thing about oils, and especially in, for anybody who's watching this and have watched any of our history over the past five years, they've always heard me talk about if you're, and I never tried to endorse a brand, I say look for the oils yourself find an oil that is one molecularly small enough to literally penetrate the hair because penetration is a broad brush. I have to be careful how I say that. It's a really broad brush, Ooh. right? Because the cuticle layer is only seven to 10 layers. So if they penetrate three layers of the cuticle, they call that penetration. So, sure. and basically you're only working in those outer layers of the cuticle in the first place, because that's where, the natural lipids do the most good. So I've always said, look for an oil that has a high ratio of triglycerides because triglycerides have a natural affinity for protein in the hair. They have a natural attraction. They actually work like a patch to patch those, those, those gaps, those rips and those tears. And they're molecularly large enough so that though they will remain, they will remain protected as long as you continue to use those oils. That means that it's part of a maintenance process. So, <clears throat> so that's what oils really are supposed to do for the hair, other than give the hair shine. You know, some oils are not designed to penetrate the hair at all. They're just surface active, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's how, why we use dimethicone so much. It's silicone. It's not an oil. But we use dimethicone because it's meant to give shine to the hair. That's all it's designed to do. That's why most products that have silicone in them are not to be designed. They're not designed to be used with heat. They're not designed to be used with heat. Let me say it a third time in case you didn't hear One more me. Time. They're not designed to be used with heat. So think about some of the color brands that are on the market that actually have dimethicone in them to add shine, and they recommend that you use it with heat. 
And then these same products, you know, afterwards, you know, well, now we're going to finish and style the hair. And we don't use a thermal protector on the hair before we use a hot tool. And so we hit that hair with 400 degrees, 450, some of those hot tools, and we can literally burn or degrade the dye intermediates that we just put in the hair. So that's what our oils are designed to do. Uh, anything you want to add to that, Max? I feel like I've been talking here for the whole first part of this video. Am I just, am I, I mean, going down the, a rabbit trail or is it, am I no, making sense? No, you're making perfect sense. And I think, that's okay. like, you know, just to, just to back it up a couple steps. The biggest thing you guys is to know what kind of oil you're putting on the hair and what it does. Do you want something that actually penetrates the hair? Does the hair need that? Do you need to replace some of those missing lipids in the hair? Or do you just need something to sit on the surface for the shine? Because each of these, like all products are not created equally. So, right. you know, it's just kind of being able to discern between most, you know, I feel like most retail lines have at least, two different kinds of oils. Some of them have multiple yeah, uh, right. oils, you know? So each one probably serves a different purpose, which is really to sell more oil, but that's like a whole nother thing. Right. <laughs> but but being able to really look at the, the kind of oil or the kind of, sometimes it's not actually oil, like silicone is not an oil, no, it is a chemical compound that yes. reacts kind of like oil, but it gives a shine, it isn't. gives protection. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so, so but, but most oils that that are used are are not water soluble, easily mm -hmm. dissolved in water, and that's the reason that we use them on hair that has porosity because they help prevent the uptake of too much liquid in the hair strand. That's the reason that they're used. So now you come down to the molecular weight of a product. So what does a molecular weight mean? Okay, so we know in cosmetics and working with the hair, it's different than the skin. There are many products mm -hmm. that will penetrate the skin much easier than they will the hair strand. Okay, because we know the cuticle layer has microscopic, we call it some a semi-permeable. So it has small microscopic holes in it by naturally to begin with. That's not counting the rips, tears, gaps, and holes that we put in it. So an oil is designed to, um, to repel moisture. Um, you know, as well as I do, if you have clients who have extra porosity in their hair, a bleach hair is probably the prime example of this, mm -hmm. is that when it's over-processed, right? You know, when you've taken it beyond pale yellow to Nirvana blonde, or it's like chewing gum, and you go to blow dry it, it seems to take forever. Plus, you know, you, you have to understand when hair is wet, it is in its most fragile condition. Okay, so wet hair, wet hair is much more fragile than dry hair is. So if I'm trying to blow dry that, it's going to take me a long time. So I'm going to have to expose that hair to a tremendous amount of heat over a period of time and a lot of brush strokes, which you have to be concerned about. And so <clears throat> if you use an oil on the hair, that oil will automatically start to push away or repel some of the moisture that's in the hair. And as you dry it, it will actually cut down on the amount of time it takes to dry the hair. So that's a benefit of using some sort of a treatment oil in the hair during your color process. So <clears throat> when we talk about molecular weight, we want to think about what is going to penetrate the hair in those initial layers of the cuticle and protect. Yeah. 
we know in the laboratory, in order to get maximum penetration in the hair, it is anywhere from a molecular weight of 85 to 125. Okay, so some oils are barely, are, I'm sorry, from molecular weight of 80 to 150. Thank you very much. So, uh, some oils fit just under that bar. Coconut oil, for example, fits just under the bar. It's at 125. And that's regular coconut oil. And, and here's the problem that I have with regular coconut oil. Coconut oil, if you've gone to some movie theaters that are using coconut oil uh, on their popcorn, You'll notice that it's liquid when you get your popcorn, and then after a couple of minutes, it becomes a solid because coconut mm -hmm. oil will solidify uh, the minute it drops below 78 degrees in temperature. So that's its melting point. And so we've always had an issue because what happens is people use that on their hair, and because it so easily turns to a solid, it starts to build up, it actually clogs the pores in the skin and in the same way. And it starts to build up in the hair and it makes it very difficult to do chemical services over someone's hair where they've been using coconut oil. Okay, so now along comes fractionated coconut oil. And so when you talk about coconut oil with a cosmetic chemist that loves coconut oil, they will tell you all the positives about it. They'll tell you all about the, the, it has long chains, high concentrations of triglycerides, which it does. And so it has a lot of positive things to say about it. The problem is, is that it solidifies too quick. So in fractionating it, what they do is they raise it above its melting point because the, <coughs> the longer chain, um, acids, the longer chains of triglycerides, they require a higher temperature in order for them to melt. When they liquefy them, then they can pull those out of the solution, and now it simply becomes a liquid. The problem with that, and it's my issue, is that the very thing they talked about, the high ratio and concentration of triglycerides that are in the coconut oil, in order to make it so it will not solidify and it will penetrate the hair better, they've removed at least two thirds of the triglycerides that you would have gotten in the formal mixture. So right. in order to make it something that you can use, they have reduced, and of course no one tells you that, <laughs> they just tell you what they do. And as a result right. of that, I mean, yes, it has triglycerides, Yes, they're medium chain, medium length chain. They are linear, so they do penetrate better. Penetrate doesn't mean they get to the cortex. They don't need to be in the cortex. They only need to be on the outer layers of the cuticle. Now, the reason I say that is because there's lots of oils out there that have high ratios of triglycerides in them, and they have a very low molecular weight. So they penetrate the hair very well and they still have a higher ratio of triglycerides than coconut oil does. One of those right. is ta tamarind. Tamarind has a high ratio of triglycerides and it ha has a molecular weight where it penetrates the hair very well. Olive oil doesn't do much to the hair at all. Like I say, use it on your salads, use it to marinate, <laughs> marinate your steaks. Uh, I wouldn't use it on the hair. Plus, it has to it has a problem with turning rancid. <clears throat> so you have mm -hmm. to be concerned about that. Canola oil, I wouldn't recommend that either. You know, look for the oils that actually do penetrate. Now, Aragon oil, we know, does penetrate the hair to some degree. And as long as they're working in those first three, three layers of the cuticle layer, that's where most of the natural lipids exist, then... Um, that's fine. Actually, they're in the B layer of your cuticle. Remember, a cuticle has three layers itself. So in the B layer, the second layer, that's where all those natural lipids exist in the hair strand. So those are the lipids that we are trying to replace. So, uh, you know, coconut oil sounds better now because they change it slightly. 
And now they tell you it penetrates better, but they don't tell you what you're losing in order to get it to penetrate right. better. There are many oils out there that do a much better job. Actually, coconut oil, the benefit the most with coconut oil, you should make it part of your diet. Because when you make it mm -hmm. part of your diet, you get all of the, the, all of the quality ingredients that help you know, your digestive system. They help uh, you know, the bacteria in your body. It's a very, very helpful product for that. So um, that's my spin on, uh, on, on coconut oil. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, you just have to be careful out there. I mean, like they've got all kinds of oils, you know, there's always a new one. But they don't tell you much about it. And when they tell you the benefits, be cautious because sometimes it's not the benefits to the hair, it's the benefits of the product. In other words, this product has long known, been known for this, okay, but not in the hair. You know, and, and everybody's looking for the next great thing. And uh, that's why it's so funny. I, I've said this before, Max, and this sounds really bad, I think, but I'm going to say it anyway. Because oh, this is our this is our show. <laughs> Hey, right. You know, and uh, worse off, I'd have to talk to the director. Well, wait a minute, that's you and me. So I think I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. So. I think Americans are so funny. They really are. Here's why if it comes from the rainforest in the Amazon, if it comes from a special prehistoric tree in Nigeria, if it comes from special trees in Israel or Macedonia, we buy it, right? To repair our hair. And yet, if we just shampooed with properly pH shampoos and we used conditioning products on our hair if needed, and if we did treatments that already exist, you wouldn't need these exotic oils. But the oh. behavior of the American consumer is not that. You know, I mean, think about it. We, we never have enough drying power. That's why hair dryers are 2,000 watts now. You know, can you oh, give me a 5,000 watt hair dryer? You know, some of them are so powerful, they... They, they flick off your, your emergency switch in your electrical outlets in your, in your bathroom. You know? Um, Ain't that the truth? Hot, hot's not hot enough. You know, I want something at 450 degrees. Well, that's 50 degrees cooler than it takes to broil a steak. You broil a steak at 500 degrees. So you have to keep that in mind when you're using those hot tools on your hair, especially when you have fragile hair but we beat our hair up we we you know people are not they're not always taught how to blow dry their hair successfully even salon professionals yeah. don't know how to blow dry chemically treated hair i cannot tell you how many times max when i was teaching in new york and we would finish doing a uh, a scalp bleach you know a, a global bleaching and then mm -hmm. I'd see people blow drying the bleach and they were taking the blow dryer and they were going like this. Ah! Right. Yeah. And if you think the about that, dry. the rough yeah. dry. If you think about that, when I bleach hair at the end of the process, the hair, the cuticle is swollen approximately 22%. So it's fat. It's fat. Yeah. So that means yeah. the cuticle is raised. Then you take a blow dryer. Let's just take the standard 2,000 watt blow dryer that most hairdressers use. The speed, the air speed of the, the air coming out of the nozzle of that dryer without the concentrator on it is about 35 miles an hour. When you put a concentrator on it, it's about 72 miles an hour. So if I take swollen hair and I take a blow dryer, with my air coming out at 35 miles an hour, and now I'm shaking it, you might as well put that you're, client on a motorcycle. around like a tornado. Yeah. yeah, you might as well put her on a motorcycle and send her down the highway. Yeah, and exactly. there is no way that hair is going to shine. Okay. And that's why 
when people finished the global lightning, people who had never done it before, and they went to blow dry it like that. And they went, well, it's not very shiny. It looks really unhealthy. I said, yeah, of course. I said, watch this. Yeah. I put the concentrator on the blow dryer. I took a Denman brush. Denman brush, for those of you that are under the age of 30, it's called a Denman brush. <laughs> but Elsa soon made it famous. AKA the half round brush. There's also a ceramic version called a vest brush. Oh, best brush great. you could ever invest in. And if I take that and I just follow behind the brush, that's where the heat's supposed to be. Follow behind the brush on the hair, on the hair, not on the bristles of the brush. Right. If you put it on a plastic bristles, guess what will happen to those bristles? <laughs> they will eventually mm -hmm. melt. <laughs> and follow behind it, and suddenly shine is created. And they say, how do you do that? I said, all we did was lay down the cuticle. Well, I was just going to say, and let's forget, you're also blowing hair dry in the direction of the cuticle. Yeah. Instead of do doing you that and just blowing the cuticle out even further oh you mean there's more to it max than just this <laughs> a little bit <laughs> i mean but hey what do what do we know <clears throat> so that's my pitch to the consumer that's my pitch to the hairdresser is look you know what if we just had good habits if we just had good behaviors, I mean, it's great to use these oils. If you like that, that's wonderful. But they're really, uh, half the things that are in the market today would be totally unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, and, and the thing to keep in mind is, is that most manufacturers, whatever, whatever your preference is, your retail line to use in the salon, they've tested those products, right. you know, thoroughly. So they, you, you shouldn't need a magic potion to replace something that is already existing in your line. Right, right. Especially something that belongs in a kitchen cupboard. I mean, yeah. sorry, but that's just, that's my opinion. But right. I think you have a great you know. opinion. Here, here. Air high fives to you. Right? Air high fives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, look. I don't want to do my post oxidation service with uh, apple cider vinegar. I just don't. Yeah. Yeah. Great on a salad. So here's the way you look at it a true master of their craft knows how to manipulate their canvas, whatever that canvas is. Mm -hmm. If you are a wood carver, you know how to manipulate what you're working with. Your medium, it is called. If you're a sculptor, you know how to manipulate your medium. If you're a clothing designer, you know how to manipulate your medium. Clothing designers, if they're working on different textures of material, different material types, guess what? They don't use the same techniques on every type of material because it simply doesn't work. And it's like I said the other day, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail and everything is not a right. nail. Okay. So I well, add something to that too. Yes. Also, you guys, a master knows their tools that they're working with. So for us as hairdressers, our tools aren't just a scissor and a comb, but they are the the styling products, the back bar products, the chemical right. products that we're working with. And, you know, you don't see Gordon Ramsay, you know, cutting uh, a beautiful filet with uh, a plastic Dixie knife, right? That's he's, right. You know, mm -hmm. like he's, he's doing it with, you know, probably right. a super expensive, you know, chef's quality knife. So again, you know, know your canvas, know your tools. Right, right. absolutely. And, yeah. you know, be diligent, okay? Uh, we'll just leave you with that. Be diligent. Don't get hung up on potions for your emotions. 
<laughs> make sure the potion has a, a, an effect, a benefit, and you know what that benefit is. And uh, sure. I think it's going to help you. It'll help you handle, especially when those oil stories keep coming around. Well, we know they're, they're important today because of the way that we treat air in our industry. Uh, oils aren't essential, you know, something to replenish those natural lipids in the hair. And so we're going to work with them, but we have to really be careful on what we're using, making sure it's actually doing what we say it's doing right. for the hair. All right, look, I uh, want to thank you very much for paying attention to us today. It looks like we were, had a little bit of a rant. So what can I say? It is what it is. Um, thank you so much for Release watching every us here. other episode. Yeah. Thanks for watching us here One on YouTube. Us. We invite you to subscribe. You can do that right down here below us. And if you click on the little uh, button, I think it's a bell that's down there, uh, you will get uh, a notification every time that we drop a new uh, Rabbit Trails episode. As I said, this is episode 25. Max, I can't believe we've done 25, ep 25 episodes. I'm real excited about what the future brings for us. We are growing. Mm -hmm. Our following is growing. We thank you all so much for that on our Instagram uh, our followings are growing as well. The turnouts for our live broadcast that we're doing on Thursday evenings. Thank you so much for that. Remember, you can follow Max and I on Instagram. You can find Max at Maxim here. You can find me at Real Captain Color. And if you want to visit our website, right on my Instagram bio, right in my bio, you can click on that link. It'll take you up directly to our educational catalog on our website. We invite you to log on, take a look at some of the programs that we offer, both virtual classrooms, downloadable webinars, and hopefully uh, soon uh, some actual live in-person, person-to-person programs. Uh, we have Pinnacle Session 2 coming up in September. We're very excited about that. That is two days of color correction. Um, you buy the entire Pinnacle program, or you can come to that two-day session as an individual program if you choose. So you can take a look and you can find it on our website. Um, be sure to check us out during the week. We do try to do live broadcasts at least on Thursday nights with Captain Color and friends, Max and I, and our friend Yvette Fontenay. And we use Christine out of Montreal. We have some other people that hopefully they'll be joining us uh, in these live broadcasts and it's just basically live chat talking about the things that issues that uh, we go through in the industry today <clears throat> and our goal of course is to help you become more successful that is our total reason for being here is to help you become empowered so that you can make intelligent and informed choices on things of not only behaviors you're going to execute but on products that you're going to choose to work with. Uh, we call it helping you discover your own personal genius. It's inside each and every one of you, but you have to really apply and you have to study and you have to seek out the knowledge. Today, it's important. There's lots of information. Not always is it accurate information. It's made up a lot of opinion, a lot of perception, and a lot of assumption. So, Max, any final thoughts? I mean, Dennis, I think you've covered everything. You guys, thank you so much for tuning in again. We'll see you on Thursday on the live. And if you haven't, click the subscribe button below. We'll be here wow. every week. All right, great. And our ride is here, buddy. I hear it. So uh, I'll yeah. see you in the clearing. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. See you soon. Bye-bye.